Hello everyone and welcome to this online lesson on field effect transistors. My name is Faiz and I will be delivering this uh, online lecture. For those of you who are enrolled into the course that I teach, which is uh, KL217 for Analog Electronics at UKM, this is chapter 6 of your textbook. Right, so okay, uh, previously we have studied the BJTs or bipolar junction transistors. Uh, from now on, we are going to be studying the field effect transistors, uh, which are also known as FETs. Now, as, as the acronym uh, uh, implies, FETs is uh, just an another type of transistor, therefore, it can perform similar functions just like the BJTs, and uh, so therefore, FETs can be used as an amplifier and also as a switching device and FETs are also made up of uh, semiconductor materials and it has uh, three terminals three terminals just like the BJTs but there are also some fundamental differences between FETs and BJTs uh, the first difference is that FETs are voltage controlled devices whereas the BJTs are current controlled devices and now if you remember correctly uh, the BJTs in for BJTs you use the base current to control the magnitude of the collector current, the output side. Now for a FET, you actually use the voltage that you apply at the gate terminal to control the magnitude of the drain current. So therefore, FETs are voltage controlled devices. Now, uh, another difference uh, between FETs and BJTs is that uh, due to the construction and the structure of the FETs, uh, FETs have uh, have higher input impedance than the BJTs and FETs are also less sensitive to temperature variations. They are more uh, thermally stable, so therefore FETs can be used in the more extreme conditions. And due to its construction also, FETs are physically smaller and therefore can be more easily integrated uh, into ICs or integrated circuits. Now, uh, there are two types of FETs that we are going to be studying in this uh, lesson. The first type is the JFET, uh, which is an acronym for Junction Field Effect Transistor. And the second type of FETs is, uh, that we're going to study is the MOSFET, or the acronym is, uh, which is an acronym for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistors. Now, MOSFET, uh, there are two types of MOSFET that we're going to study. The first type is the D-MOSFET or, or, or the depletion MOSFET and the second type is the E-MOSFET or enhancement MOSFET. Okay, so let's go ahead and study, start with the JFET. Now, uh, this picture here shows a typical construction of a JFET. There are two types of JFETs available, the, uh, which, which are the N-channel and the P-channel. Now, this, is, uh, the picture, this picture shows you uh, the construction of a JFET. Now, JFET is a three-terminal semiconductor device. First, you have the gate, gate terminal over here. And then you have the drain terminal. And then you have the source terminal. Right? So, the drain and the source terminals are connected to the opposite ends, op opposite ends, op opposite ends of the end channel. Right? So, since we are talking about the end channel device, end channel JFET, you have the end channel material forming the channel between the drain and the source right so in between the drain and the source there is the gate terminal and the gate terminal is connected to the p type material so these are the symbols of a jfet the n channel mosfet the uh, sorry the, the n channel jfet has the arrow on the gate terminal pointing in and for the p channel jfet uh, you have the arrow on the gate terminal pointing out. Okay, so let's discuss the basic operation of a JFET. Now, a JFET can be a JFET operation can be compared to a garden hose. Uh, on the source end, you have the a build up of water pressure, and that pressure is uh, probably coming from a pump or from a higher ground. So, as a result of that pressure the water wants to flow through flow out of the pipe and into the drain but all of the water has to pass through a channel and the width of that of that channel is controlled by the gate <coughs> so if the gate uh, widens 
the size of the, uh, or the width of the channel the water can then flow e flow easily flow through but if the gate uh, narrows down or decreases the size of the channel then it will be hard for the water to to flow through and as a result you get a very uh, low amount of uh, current or flow rate of the water so essentially uh, the, the basic mechanism, the basic principle of a JFET is similar to uh, a BJT where you have uh, charge carriers, charge carriers flowing from one end to the other end and that flow is controlled by a third terminal which is a gate for JFET or the base for in the case for a BJT. Now, uh, there are three basic operating conditions for a JFET. In the first case, you keep the gate voltage zero and you apply a positive drain to source voltage. So that's the first case. And in the second case, you keep the drain to source voltage positive, but you apply a negative gate voltage. And in the third case, uh, is a condition where you can use the GFET as a voltage controlled resistor. So we are going to be uh, in the next few slides, we are going to be looking at uh, these three basic operating conditions of a JFET. Okay, so let's look at the first case for the operation of a JFET, uh, in which you do not apply any gate voltage, and but you apply a positive drain to source voltage. So as you apply a positive uh, drain voltage, the mobile electrons the elect uh, the mobile electrons in the channel which are negatively charged will be attracted towards the drain and as a result of this movement of electrons towards the drain you establish we then establish the drain current right so as you increase the drain voltage more and more electrons will be attracted towards the drain and they will also be moving uh, at a faster rate so therefore the drain current will also increase so if you keep increasing the drain voltage, you will also increase. It has the effect of increasing the magnitude of the drain current. But uh, concurrently, as you increase the drain voltage, you will also increase the depletion region, the size of the depletion region between the end channel and the p-type material connected to the gate. All right. The reason is because the electrons, the the mobile electrons, we are which are originally in the vicinity of the depletion region will also be attracted towards the drain so as a result the depletion region the, de the size of the depletion region will also increase and this increase of the depletion region will decrease the size of the channel so the electrons traveling from the source to the drain will find it harder to travel through the channel because the size of the channel is being reduced is being decreased by the by in, by the increasing size of the depletion region so that's uh, <coughs> so as a result the overall resistance of the end channel incre increases as you increase the drain voltage so uh, just to recap as you increase the drain voltage as you apply a positive drain voltage electrons the mobile electrons in the channel will be attracted towards the drain and you establish the drain current and as you keep increasing the drain, uh, the drain voltage, you will increase the magnitude of the drain current and at the same time, you will increase the size of the depletion region between the end channel and the uh, p-type material connected to the, to the drain. And as a result of this increase of the depletion region, the size of the channel in which the electron is traveling is decreasing. And as a result of the decrease of the size of the channel, the resistance of the antenna increases it will make it harder for the electrons to travel from the source to the drain now as you increase the magnitude of the applied drain voltage the the size of the depletion region between the n type material the n channel and the p type material connected to the gate will increase and eventually the depletion region will uh, merge and pinch off the channel so as a result of this uh, any further increase in drain voltage will not increase the drain current because the resistance of the channel is already maximum uh, the electrons are, are getting harder to travel from the source to the drain and as a result any further increase 
uh, of the drain voltage does not increase, does not result in any increase of the drain current. So therefore, at that stage, the drain current is said to have reached a saturation level. Okay, so let's look at the current voltage characteristics of the GFET uh, for the condition that we have discussed just now. So VGS, the gate voltage is kept is zero, at zero volt. Now, as you first increase the drain to source voltage, you increase the source the drain voltage from zero uh, towards a certain value. You will find that the drain current also increases uh, proportionally. So as a result, you you get a proportional increase of drain current as a result of uh, an increase of the drain voltage, but. Uh, as you keep on increasing the drain voltage, uh, the, deple the depletion region uh, inside the device uh, between the end channel and the p-type material connected to the gate will de increase and the increase of the depletion region will pinch the channel and as a result the electrons will find it harder to travel from the source to the drain and as a result of that the, the resistance of the channel increases and therefore the drain current reaches a saturation value meaning that uh, if you apply any further increase in drain to source voltage the drain current does not increase anymore it stays constant uh, it, uh, it, it, it is said that uh, it has uh, reached a sat saturation level now uh, in the regions towards the left of the saturation level is what you call the ohmic, ohmic region where you can see that the slope of the curve is uh, fairly constant and the slope, the inverse of the slope gives you the resistance of the channel, right? So beyond the saturation point, you will see that uh, the curve is uh, flat. And if you take the slope, the inverse of the, the slope, it will give you a very, very high value. And that shows that the, the inverse of the slope is actually the resistance of the channel. So beyond the saturation value, the resistance of the channel is very, very high. So therefore, any further increase of VDS does not give you any further increase in drain current as well. Now let's look at the second case of the operating characteristic of a JFET uh, in which you apply a positive drain voltage so you are already establishing a drain current uh, the current is flowing from the drain to the source and also uh, this time you apply a negative gate voltage so as you apply a negative gate voltage, the electrons uh, which uh, originally uh, lie very near to the gate terminal will be repelled away from the gate because electrons are negatively charged. So they are they are being repelled away from the gate, away from the gate terminal by the negative gate voltage. So uh, as the electrons are repelled away, the depletion region also gets bigger. And the increases, the increase of the depletion region actually decreases the width of the channel in which the current is flowing through. So as a result, the resistance of the channel increases because the electrons are finding it harder to travel from the source towards the drain because uh, the channel is uh, already con constricted, so the, the size is being reduced. So as a result, in a nutshell, as a result of applying a negative gate voltage you actually reduces you actually reduce the magnitude of the drain current so this is the current voltage characteristics for the second case of the operating condition of a JFET so originally you have this curve here and this curve is uh, what you get when you don't apply any gate voltage so as you apply a negative gate voltage the depletion region increases and as a result of that the, resist the resistance of the channel also increases and consequently your drain current will be dropped will be, will be reduced so this curve here shows you that uh, at uh, when you apply a negative one volt uh, to the JFET you have a reduced drain current compared to the condition when you don't apply any gate voltage so if you keep on applying a more negative gate voltage to the device you will reach a condition where the drain current drops to zero uh, because the channel is uh, fully blocked off by the depletion region and the gate voltage at which the drain current drops to zero 
the magnitude of the gate voltage at which the drain vol drain current drops to zero is known as the pinch off voltage or the uh, or, or, or also vgs off all right so pinch off voltage is the gate voltage at which the drain current drops to zero Now let's look at the third case of the op uh, JFET operating characteristics in which the JFET, JFET can be used as a variable resistor. A uh, variable resistor is a resi resistor, resistor uh, which uh, the resistance can be varied, it's not static. So if you look at the ohmic region uh, towards the left, which is uh, towards the left of the saturation value, you find that the, the slope of the ID versus VDS uh, changes with respect uh, to the applied gate voltage so initially when uh, uh, the gate voltage is zero you have uh, this curve here and the slope is uh, uh, quite steep and as you apply a more negative gate voltage the slope uh, the, the curve becomes flatter and this change of slope actually indicates the change of resistance of the JFET so if as you apply a more and more negative gate voltage the curve becomes flatter and if you take the inverse of the slope of inverse of the slope which is actually the resistance of the channel you will find that as you increase as you as you apply a more and more negative gate voltage the resistance of the channel increases and finally you will come to a point where the drain voltage uh, drain current drops to zero so essentially the JFET can be used as a, var as a variable resistor in this region here and you change, you vary the resistance of the JFET, you vary the resistance of the channel by varying the magnitude of the, the negative magnitude of the gate voltage. Okay, uh, so uh, it is perhaps more interesting or more interactive uh, for some of you to learn about JFET uh, with the use of uh, an animation. So I have found a very interesting animation at this link here. So if you just click on the link, you will be directed towards uh, this page here. And you can play around with the variable variables here. And the variables are the drain voltage here and the gate voltage. So as you increase, as you apply the drain voltage, you establish the drain current. So the electrons in the channel start to flow towards the drain. And you, uh, as a result, you get a drain current. And as you apply a negative gate voltage, you will increase the depletion region here, the, the white region, the depletion region between the channel and the gate. And the increase of the depletion region will reduce the size of the channel. And consequently, you will reach a point whereby the drain, volt, the drain current just uh, stops, it drops to zero. So uh, please take some time and visit this link and play around with the variables. Uh, and uh, you can also read up the descriptions here which are very helpful and uh, to help you understand, to better understand the operation of a JFET. Now so far up to this point we have been using the N channel JFET as a, as, a, as a study subject, as a study device but there's also P channel JFETs available out there now, P-channel JFET behaves exactly like, just like the N-channel, except that the polarities and the currents are reversed. So, as the name implies, uh, the P-channel JFET has a, uh, the channel made from P-channel material, P-type material, and the gate is made up of uh, N-type material. Okay, so how do we model the uh, characteristics, the electrical characteristic of a JFET? Now, the transfer characteristics uh, which relate the input to output of a JFET is not uh, as straightforward as a BJT. Now, if you recall, uh, for the case of a BJT, the output, which is the collector current, is a function of the input current, which is your base current, multiplied by a proportional uh, constant, proportionally constant known as beta. So, for a JFET, the input and output is uh, really linearly related right so you have uh, a certain magnitude of base current multiply with the beta and you get the collector current which is the output now for a JFET your input is the gate voltage which is a uh, VGS and your output is the drain current and they are not linearly related and their relationship is given by this uh, equation here known as uh, Shockley's equation 
So the equation states that the ID, which is the output of a JFET drain current, is uh, equal to the IDSS, which is the uh, drain current uh, saturation value, the, the, the maximum current drain current that you get when your applied gate voltage is zero, which is uh, this current here. Now for this particular JFET, your IDSS is about um, 8 milliampere and you get IDSS when your applied gate voltage is zero. So it's your maximum uh, current, maximum drain current at, uh, which, has, uh, which, has, which has reached the saturation value. So, so ID, the drain current of a, J, uh, of a JFET is a function of IDSS, your applied gate voltage and your pinch off voltage. And you can see that the term here, there's a, it's a quadratic term, right? So the input and output uh, of a JFET is not linear. Okay, so how do we plot the JFET transfer curve? Right, uh, there are some ways how to plot it. So let's look at the first way, the first method, which is the graphical method. And using graphical method, you start from the output characteristic of the JFET. And the output characteristic of the JFET is just ID versus VDS for some values of gate voltage. So we start from this curve and you transform it. You, you transfer it to a graph of drain current versus gate voltage. Okay. So how you do it is that you, you do it uh, curve by curve. So let's start by this uh, first curve here. When the gate voltage is zero, your drain current is about 8 milliampere. So you plot that out, you take the level of current at 8 uh, milliampere and you take at uh, for the you, you take the gate voltage at zero so you get the inter intersection between the line of gate voltage zero and drain current of 8 milli 8 milliampere and you get that point over here so you repeat for the next curve in the next curve your your drain your gate voltage is uh, minus 1 volt and at that gate voltage you have about 4.5 milliamps of current so you take that point out that drain, uh, drain current level out and you plot out a gate voltage of minus 1 volt from the curve from, uh, from, from the graph so the intersection between these two lines between the gate voltage and the drain current gives you your second point and you repeat this whole procedure for whatever curves for, 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 for the curves that you have until the point of the pinch of voltage and for this particular device for this particular voltage sorry for this for this particular JFET the pinch of voltage is about uh, minus 4 volts because at minus 4 volts your drain current the drain current is zero so you just plot that out you take a, a drain current of zero and you take another point at minus 4 volts and you get another point there and you just connect all the points that you have plotted out together so as you can see the drain current versus vgs uh, does not give you a straight curve it is not a linear curve but uh, rather some sort of a quadratic or exponential curve. You can also plot the uh, JFET transfer curve uh, using the Shockley's equation itself. But in order to do that, you're going to need two values from the specification of the JFET, which are the IDSS and the pinch off voltage. Right. So once you get the values of, the values of these two variables, you just substitute them into the Shockley's equation and you key in you substitute the value of vgs with whatever whatever gate voltage that you are interested in but please bear in mind that the value of the gate voltage and the pinch of voltage is always negative for this particular device for this uh, n channel jfet right so once you do that once you get the values of idss and v pinch off you just uh, key in so the first step uh, is uh, plotting the first point and the first point is usually at uh, you start from usually by applying a gate voltage of zero and you know that by when you apply a gate voltage of zero you get a maximum saturation drain current so applying vgs of zero over there you get id id just equal to idss so that's your point over there and you repeat this procedure for any points in between that you might be interested in any point any particular points of vgs that you are interested and the last point that you should be plotting is the when your v, VGS, your applied gate voltage is equal to the pinch off voltage. So if you apply, you substitute your VGS equals to VP, then this term here becomes zero. So as a result, your drain current also drops to zero. So that's translate, this translates into your point here over there. So you can then connect all the point 
parts together to form your transfer equation for your JFET. Now the third and quickest method to plot to plot the JFET transfer curve is by using the shorthand method. And uh, using this method, you can plot the transfer curve very quickly uh, to an acceptable degree of accuracy. And you just need to plot these four points uh, uh, as listed in the table here. So the first point that you plot is when your VGS is equal to zero. When your applied gate voltage is equal to zero, you know that you get your maximum drain current, your uh, saturation drain current. So for this particular JFET, the IDSS is given at uh, as uh, 8 mA and this occurs when your VGS is equal to zero. Now the other point that you plot is the other end of the curve which is when your gate voltage is equal to pinch off voltage. So when your pinch off voltage, uh, your gate voltage is equal to pinch off voltage, you know that the drain current must be zero. So in this particular example, for this particular device, you have the pinch off voltage equal to minus 6 volts and the drain current is zero. So that's one point over here. And then you just uh, need to plot two other points. So the first point is that when your pinch off voltage is equal to, uh, sorry, when your applied gate voltage is equal to half your pinch off voltage, your drain current should be equal to about a quarter of your IDSS, right? So in this particular example, uh, your pinch off voltage is given by minus 6 volts. So half of, um, uh, half of that VP is equal to three, minus 3 volts. And at minus 3 volt, you should get your drain current equal to a quarter of IDSS. So uh, your IDSS is 8 mA, a quarter of that is equal to 2 mA. So that's your third point. And your final point is when your applied gate voltage is equal to roughly a third of your pinch off voltage then your drain current should be about half your IDSS. So a third of VP is about 2 volt in this particular example. So at 2 volt, you should get about half of your IDSS, so which is around here, around 4 mA. So that's another point over here, just about here. So that's the fastest, the quickest way to plot your uh, JFET transfer, corrective, car transfer characteristic, which is by using the shorthand method. And I suggest you that I suggest that you start to familiarize yourself with this shorthand method because you're going to be using this a lot uh, in our course. Okay, so, so let's look at a quick example of how to use the shorthand method to plot the transfer characteristic of your JFET. And this example is given at the page is taken from page three nine nine of your textbook. So the question asks you to plot the transfer curve of, G, of a JFET and that, uh, the, uh, the parameters of the JFET uh, are given. The IDSS is 12 mA and the pinch of voltage is minus 6 volts. So from, from this information, you know that the IDSS of 12 mA can only happen when your gate voltage is zero. When you don't apply any gate voltage, you'll get your maximum drain current, saturation drain current. And when your applied gate voltage is equal to VP, which is minus 6 volts, you get zero current. So there you go, you already have two points to plot. Now the next job is to plot the other two points and by using the, 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 the shorthand method. So <clears throat> the other two points is that uh, in the first half, uh, sorry, uh, when your applied gate voltage is equal to half of VP, your drain current becomes a quarter of your IDSS. So in this particular example, your pinch of voltage is minus six, so half of that is minus three volt. And at minus three volt, you should get a quarter of IDSS. So 12 milliamps divided by four, you get three. So that's one point there. And the other point is when your applied gate voltage uh, is roughly equal to about a third of uh, the pinch of voltage, which is about 1.8, 1.8 to two, uh, minus 1.8 to 2 volts and when that happens when you apply a third of v pinch you get half of the IDSS so your IDSS is 12 milliamps half of that is 6 so that's another point here 6 milliamps occurring at VGS equal to a third of VP so that's four points together you can connect them all together to form your transfer curve Alright, so that's all on uh, GFET. I hope it wasn't too hard for you to understand GFETs and I hope my explanations uh, are clear. 
So let's now move on to the second type of fat which we are going to study which are the MOSFETs or metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. Now a typical MOSFET is made by placing a metal, a metal gate over an, a very thin oxide layer and all of this is located above a semiconductor channel. So that's where the acronym MOS comes from. It's metal over an oxide layer above a semiconductor channel. So that's where the MOS is. So MOSFETs are pretty much similar to JFETs, but they also have some other additional characteristics which we will study. And there are two, ty two types of MOSFETs which we are going to discuss. The depletion type MOSFETs and the enhancement type MOSFETs. Okay, so this is uh, this figure shows you the typical construction of a depletion MOSFET or D-MOSFET. Now, just like JFETs, uh, uh, a D-MOSFET has three terminals. You have the drain, the source, and the gate here. And as you can see, the gate, the metal gate, is located on top of a very thin uh, silicon dioxide, which lies above uh, an N-channel material. Right, so. Uh, similarly, the drain is connected to an N-type and the source is also connected to the N-type and the source and drain are connected together by an N-type channel. So all of these, all of these regions, all of these N-type materials are fabricated on top of a P-type uh, substrate, on top of a P-type silicon. Right. <clears throat> Let's look at the basic operation of a D-MOSFET, which I'm pretty sure by now you can guess what happens when you apply a different type of biases to the D-MOSFET. So as you apply a positive drain voltage and with a zero gate voltage, you so you, you will have the electrons in the source and in the channel and uh, in the drain, all of them are mobile, negatively charged electrons will be attracted towards the drain and as a result of this movement of mobile charge carriers, you establish the drain current. So Applying a positive drain voltage establishes the drain current. The, the electrons from the source can flow to the drain uh, through the N-type material uh, channel. But what happens when you apply a negative gate voltage? So as you apply a negative gate voltage, the electrons which are in the channel, forming the channel, will be repelled away from the gate because electrons are negatively charged and you apply a negative voltage at the gate so the electrons will be repelled away from the gate and they will recombine at the uh, p-type material substrate so as a result of uh, repelling away of the electrons away from the channel you are actually reducing the number of electrons that participate in the conduction you reduce the size of the channel so as a result applying a negative gate voltage reduces the drain current but uh, what happens when you apply a positive gate voltage? So as you can expect, if you apply a positive gate voltage, the inverse situation happens. If you apply a positive gate voltage, electrons which are minority carriers inside the P-type material will be attracted towards the gate because electrons are negatively charged and you apply a positive gate terminal. So electrons will be attracted towards the gate and therefore more and more electrons will be able to participate in the con current conduction between the source and the drain. So as a result of having more electrons uh, participating in the conduction, you increase the size of the channel and as a result of that, you get more drain current. So in conclusion, you apply a negative gate voltage, will, uh, applying a negative gate voltage will deplete the size of the channel. So that, 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 that's the reason why it's called depletion MOSFET. Uh, the operation is primarily uh, on the basis of depletion. Applying a neg negative gate voltage will move the electrons away from the channel. So as a result, you deplete the channel of any of uh, electrons. So you, you reduce the size, uh, uh, the drain current. But if you do the inverse, you apply a positive gate voltage, you will attract more electrons towards the channel. And as a result of that, more, more electrons will participate in the current conduction, which consequently increases your drain current. Okay, there's a very interesting uh, flash movie which I found on, on the internet and you can just visit it by clicking this link here and once you click on that link you will be directed towards uh, a page and at that page you can just click play and it will show you uh, what happens, interesting things which happen 
uh, as you apply different biases to the git and to the drain so uh, please take some time to visit this uh, interesting animation uh, let's look at the current voltage characteristics of a D MOSFET and it looks uh, pretty similar to that of a JFET you have the initially you have the ID versus VDS here output is drain current VDS or drain voltage so as you increase the the drain voltage you will also increase the drain current proportionately until it reaches a certain saturation value and also the magnitude of the drain current is influenced by the magnitude of your gate voltage so uh, if you recall from a previous slide if you apply a negative gate voltage you deplete the channel you reduce the size of, of the channel so as a result of applying a negative gate voltage you reduce the current the drain current the magnitude of the drain current because you are depleting the channel you are pushing the electrons away from the interface from the channel now if you apply so so this region here is called the depletion mode right but a D MOSFET can also operate in an enhancement mode enhancement mode happens when you apply a positive gate voltage as you apply a positive gate voltage you attract more electrons to the channel and as a result you increase the magnitude of the drain current all right so this curve here can be plotted using the Shockley equation that you learned uh, previously when uh, that, that, that we have discussed previously for the JFET okay so th this is what I meant by uh, that you can plot you uh, the uh, current voltage characteristics of a D MOSFET using the Shockley equation so when your VGS is equal to zero you get your maximum drain current just like in the case of JFET so your IDSS is around here so as you apply a negative gate voltage your drain current reduces below the IDSS level but if you apply a positive gate voltage right so you 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 the polarity now the the symbol of your VGS is now positive and you apply a positive VGS while keeping the VP negative you will get a positive drain current so you you will increase actually the drain current so applying a positive gate voltage uh, increases the drain current and this can be uh, modeled by the same Shockley equation now for the purpose of our discussion previously we have used an example of an N channel D fed but there are also P channel D, D MOSFETs available out there and a P channel D MOSFET behaves exactly just like the N channel D MOSFET except, except that the polarities of the uh, applied voltages and also the currents are reversed let us look at a quick example of a D MOSFET now this example is taken from a textbook and in this example you are asked to sketch the transfer characteristics of an N channel depletion time type MOSFET and the IDSS of that MOSFET is given as uh, 10 milliamps and the pinch of voltage is minus 4 volts so from this information you can sketch the transfer characteristics you know that the IDSS can only can only happen when your VGS is equal to zero so that's your first point over here and you also know that when your applied gate voltage is equal to minus four which is your pinch of voltage you get zero current so that's your second point and then from then you go on and plot the other two points using the shorthand method which I have explained previously so you plot uh, the other two points uh, occur when your uh, applied gate voltage is equal to half VP and also your applied gate voltage is equal to a third VP right so when applied gate voltage is equal to uh, half VP your drain voltage uh, your drain current should drop to a quarter and, and it's uh, your gate voltage is a third VP your drain current should drop to about half so that's the other two points here and also you have to remember that a D MOSFET can operate with a positive gate voltage so if you want to plot that you just substitute a positive value of a gate voltage and in this, in this example the positive gate voltage is plus one so you substitute the plus one volt of uh, gate voltage into the Shockley equation you get another point on the enhancement mode region of the D MOSFET so there you go this is the solution the transfer characteristic of this uh, particular D MOSFET Now the final type of MOSFET that we're going to be discussing is the 
enhancement type MOSFET or E-MOSFET, right? So previously we have discussed the depletion type MOSFET or D-MOSFET. And the only difference between uh, an E-MOSFET and a D-MOSFET is that in an E-MOSFET, you don't have a ready channel connecting the source and drain. So when you don't apply any bias, you don't have any channel connecting the source and drain. So by default, the source and drain are not connected together. And this is in contrast to the D-MOSFET where by default, you already have a, an end channel connecting the source and drain. But in, e, in an E-MOSFET, you don't have that channel. You have to create that channel in order to induce the drain current. Right, but uh, anything else uh, just like the D-MOSFET, you have the gate uh, located on top of a, a silicon dioxide insulator. And below that insulator is your P-type substrate separating the source and drain. Right, see, so these are the various symbols of uh, an E-MOSFET. Okay, so let's study the basic operation of an enhancement MOSFET, E-MOSFET. So by default, uh, you don't, when you don't apply any gate voltage and you apply a positive drain to source voltage, you apply a positive drain current, you will not get any current because uh, electrons will not be able to travel from the source to the drain because there's no channel connecting the source and drain. So therefore, you don't get any current even when you apply a positive drain voltage. So what happens when you apply a positive gate voltage? Okay, so you already you are already applying a drain a positive drain voltage. So right now you are uh, you are applying a positive gate voltage. So as you apply a positive gate voltage, the holes which were originally lie very near to the gate will be repelled away, and the electrons, the mobile electrons which are minority carriers in the P substrate, will be attracted towards the gate. And this attraction, this accumulation of electrons near the interface will form a channel. And when, and when, when that channel uh, is, uh, has reached a critical size, you will, electrons will be able to travel from the source to the drain. And as a result, you get drain current, you get conduction. So that's, that's, uh, that's essentially how, why it is called an enhancement MOSFET or E-MOSFET because you enhance the channel. You create the channel in order for you to, in order to create the conduction of current. So as you apply a positive gate voltage, you get a channel of electrons formed connecting the source and drain. And if you further increase the drain to source current, you initially will get a similar increase, a proportional increase of, uh, sorry, if you increase the drain voltage, you get a proportional increase in drain current. But there you will come to a point where you will reach a saturation value where as a result of the increase of drain voltage the uh, gate region very near which lies very near to the drain will become less attractive to electrons because the it, it, the region starts to lose control of the channel because the drain the drain terminal is becoming more and more positive it's becoming positive more positive than the gate terminal itself so the area of the gate which lies very near to the drain is becoming less and less attractive to electrons. So as a result, you get sort of a pinch off near the drain end. So this pinch off will uh, saturate the value of your drain current. So any further increase in drain voltage will not result in any further increase in drain current because of this pinch off region near the drain terminal. Okay, I have found a very interesting animation of an enhancement MOSFET from the internet. So the link is given here. So let's go ahead and visit that link. So if you click on that link, you will be directed towards this uh, web page here. So there are many information, many descriptions which you can study and try to understand. So let's uh, play around with this uh, animation. So initially, when you when with a zero applied gate voltage, when you don't apply any gate voltage and you apply a positive drain voltage you will not get any current because there's no channel connecting the source and drain the electrons are not able to travel right so, but as soon as you start applying as soon as you start applying a positive gate voltage right what happens is that the initially all of the holes which were originally near the gate terminal will be repelled away from the interface and the electrons will be attracted towards the interface and the electrons will start to form a channel between the source and the drain so as you increase the gate voltage, the channel gets thicker. 
and at this juncture if you apply a positive drain voltage then you will be able to get current conduction electrons are now able to travel from the source to the drain and you get a complete circuit and you get the drain current so please take some time to visit this uh, very interesting animation and uh, read up and study all the descriptions now let's look at the current voltage characteristics of an e-mosfet so the figure on your right here shows you the output characteristic of the e-mosfet you have id versus vds for various levels of gate voltage so initially when you don't apply any gate voltage on when your gate voltage is zero you don't get any current even as you increase the drain voltage so but when you start applying a positive gate voltage you start to get current and as you increase the drain voltage initially your drain current will also increase uh, proportionately but you will you will reach the saturation value and at that value at that point your drain current level starts to saturate and the only way you can further increase your drain current upon reaching that uh, saturation value is by increasing your gate voltage to the next level right so if if you transfer this curve uh, graphically towards uh, into an output into a transfer characteristic of uh, id versus vg so the id is now output the output your vg is your gate voltage is your input so initially when your gate voltage is very very low it's very is the magnitude is less than your vt vt is your threshold voltage or it can it can be thought as a turn on voltage it is the voltage which is required uh, to be applied to the gate in order to form the channel so if your applied gate voltage is less than your threshold voltage you do not get any current you do not get, get any drain current now as soon as your applied uh, gate voltage exceeds your threshold voltage and in this particular example the threshold the threshold voltage is 2 volt so as you apply a gate voltage exceeding that threshold voltage you starts to get a conduction a drain current and, and as you can see the the increase of drain current is rather exponential especially in this uh, region here all right okay so let's look at the mathematic mathematical model of how uh, of the relationship between the drain current and the gate voltage okay so the drain current of the, an e mosfet is related to the gate voltage by this equation here so the drain current is a function of a constant k and the gate the applied gate voltage and also the threshold voltage the turn on voltage of that particular mosfet now the constant k can be calculated or it can be given it, it can be found right away from the specification sheet the way you calculate constant k is by using this formula here I, a drain current a particular drain current at a particular uh, gate voltage you can find it from the specification sheet and also you can find the value of the threshold voltage once you find all of these values you can calculate what's the value of k and you substitute that value of k back into the equation of id for id and then you can you can calculate what is the drain current for any particular uh, gate voltage that you apply so as you can see uh, also the input output characteristics of the e-mosfet is not uh, linearly related you have a quadratic term here and that explains why you have some sort of uh, exponential jump in current around this region here once your threshold voltage once your once your applied gate voltage exceeds your threshold voltage you have some sort of an, an exponential increase of your drain current all right so a p-channel mosfet a, a p-channel enhancement mosfet operates and behaves exactly just like the n-channel mosfet which we have been uh, discussing except that the polarities and the currents are reversed so in this example the threshold voltage of a p-channel mosfet is negative whereas the threshold voltage of the of the n-channel e mosfet that we have discussed previously is in the positive and also the applied gate voltage are all in the negatives right so that's the only difference between a p-channel e mosfet and an n-channel uh, e mosfet okay and finally let's look uh, at a very quick example of an e mosfet so this example is taken from a textbook and you are asked to sketch the transfer characteristic of uh, an n channel enhancement type mosfet and the value of the threshold voltage is given so you start off by calculating calculating what is the constant k and this can be found by uh, using this formula 
and the values for ID and VGS on can be found from the specification sheet the threshold voltage is given in the question it is uh, 3 volt so put all that substitute all the values in you get your K and you use that K the value of K to calculate the drain current for any particular gate voltage that you are interested using this equation here and this is the equation the same equation which I have uh, uh, explained in previous slide previous slide so you, you just plot it out for how, however many points that you are interested so this is how it looks like for the transfer characteristic of an enhancement type MOSFET so with that uh, so all of these uh, characteristics and uh, uh, characteristics and current voltage characteristics of uh, all these different transistors that we have learned so far is summarized in table uh, in, in a table at the end of your chapter and this is taken from page 4 to 5 of your textbook so you can look it up uh, for your table uh, well, you can look the table up from your textbook and use the table to solve this uh, simple assignment which uh, I'm assigning to you for those of you who are enrolled into my course please try and do these problems at the back of chapter 6 and it's uh, five uh, there are just five questions that i want you to try and we will discuss the solutions during our tutorial session so with that uh, i thank you very much for uh, visiting my channel and listening to this uh, online lesson i hope uh, that uh, you have uh, gained uh, uh, benefits from watching this lesson and i i hope uh, my explanations have been clear so thank you very much uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.